mail day, and over the world in a thousand dragnets, the bundles of letters are dumped on the docks and beaches, and all that is dear to the personal conscious reaches around us again like filings around iron magnets, and war stands aside for an hour and looks at our faces of total absorption that seem to have lost their places. Oh, demobilized for a moment, a world is made human, returns to a time that is neither the present or then, but a garland of clippings and wishes of who knows when, a time of its own creation, a thing of acumen, that keeps us, like movies, alive with a purpose, aside from the play-acting truth of the newsreel in which we have died, and aside from the candy and pictures and books we receive, as if we were patients whose speedy recovery were certain. There is proof of the end, and the lights, and the bow of the curtain, after which we shall smile at each other and get up and leave. Aside from the play and the play, there is all that is fact. These letters, the battle in progress, the place of the act, and the optimal joy of the conflict, the tears of the ads, may move us or not, and the movies at night in the palms may recall us or not to the kiss, and on Sunday the psalms may remind us of Sunday or not, but aside from the lads who arrive like our letters still fresh from the kiss and the tear, there are mouths that are dusty and eyes that are wider than fear. Say no more of the dead than a prayer. Say no more of the land where the body is laid in the coral than that it is far. Take your finger away from the map of wherever we are. For we lie in the map of the chart of your elderly hand. Do not hasten the future. In agony, too, there is time for the growth of the rose of the spirit to stir in the slime. For aside from ourselves as we are, there is nothing alive, except as it keeps us alive, not tomorrow, but now. Our mail day, today of the blood of the sweat of our brow, the year of our war to the end, when and where we arrive is no matter. But how is the question we urgently need, how to love and to hate, how to die, how to write and to read? The beauty of manhole covers, what of that? Like medals struck by a great savage Khan, like Mayan calendar stones, unliftable, indecipherable, not like the old electrum, chased and scored, mottoed and sculptured to a turn, but notched and whelked and pocked and smashed with the great company names, gentle Bethlehem, smiling United States. This rust-proof artifact of my street, long after roads are melted away, will lie, sidewise, in the grave of the iron old world, bitten at the edges, strong with its cryptic American, its dated beauty. Its quick, soft silver bell, beating, beating, and down the dark one ruby flare, pulsing out red light like an artery, the ambulance at top speed floating down, past beacons and illuminated clocks, wings in a heavy curve, dips down, and breaks speed entering the crowd. The doors leap open, emptying light. Stretchers are laid out, the mangled, lifted, and stowed into the little hospital. Then the bell, breaking the hush, tolls once, and the ambulance with its terrible cargo, rocking, slightly rocking, moves away as the doors, an afterthought, are closed. We are deranged, walking among the cops, who sweep glass and are large and composed. One is still making notes under the light. One with a bucket douches ponds of blood into the street and gutter. One hangs lanterns on the wrecks that cling 
empty husks of locusts to iron poles. Our throats were tight as tourniquets. Our feet were bound with splints, but now, like convalescents, intimate and gauche, we speak through sickly smiles and worn with the stubborn saw of common sense, the grim joke and the banal resolution. The traffic moves around with care, but we remain touching a wound that opens to our richest horror. Already old, the question, who shall die, becomes unspoken, who is innocent? For death in war is done by hands, suicide has cause and stillbirth logic, and cancer simple as a flower blooms. But this invites the occult mind, cancels our physics with a sneer, and spatters all we knew of denouement across the expedient and wicked stones. I stand on slenderness, all fresh and fair. I feel root firmness in the earth far down. I catch in the wind and lose my scent for bees that sack my throat for kisses and suck love. What is the wind that brings thy body over? Wind, I am beautiful and sick. I long for rain that strikes and bites like cold and hurts. Be angry, rain, for dew is kind to me, when I am cool from sleep and take my bath. Who softens the sweet earth about my feet, touches my face so often and brings water? Where does she go, taller than any sunflower? Over the grass like birds? Has she a root? These are great animals that kneel to us, Sent by the sun, perhaps, to help us grow. I have seen death. The colors went away. The petals grasped at nothing and curled tight. Then the whole head fell off and left the sky. She tended me and held me by my stock. Yesterday I was well, and then the gleam, the thing, sharper than frost, cut me in half. I fainted and was lifted high. I feel waist-deep in rain. My face is dry and drawn. My beauty leaks into the glass like rain. When first I opened to the sun, I thought, my colors would be parched. Where are my bees? Must I die now? Is this a part of life? In the mid-city, under an oiled sky, I lay in a garden of such dusky green, It seemed the dregs of the imagination. Hedged round by elegant spears of iron fence, My face became a moon to absent suns. A low heat beat upon my reading face. There rose no roses in that gritty place, But blue-gray lilacs hung their tassels out, Hard zinnias and ugly marigolds, And one sweet statue of a child stood by. A gutter of poetry flowed outside the yard, Making me think I was a bird of prose, For overhead, bagged in a golden cloud, there hung the fatted souls of animals, while at my eyes bright dots of butterflies turned off and on like distant neon signs. Assuming that this garden still exists, one ancient lady patrols the zinnias. She looks like George Washington crossing the Delaware. The janitor wanders to the iron rail. The traffic mounts bombastically out there, and across the street, in a pitch-black bar, with midnight mirrors, the professional takes her first whiskey of the afternoon. Ah, it's like a breath of country air.